With the island in the sky finally tackled on, we now move on to an interesting note that was dropped during the 4.2 Arcan Quest, and this is regarding the Third Descender. So today, I want to theorize on who they are, what they are, and what they did to Devat that would have warranted retribution from the first two. So welcome to Who is the Third Descender? Disclaimer, this video is just a theory and none of it is indicative of the final product. Furthermore, the Descender theory stems from months of speculation, and it's actually interesting to see how it developed along the years. This theory has been out in development for as early as Enkanamiya, so imagine all the questions that slowly got answered as time progressed. I'm going to try to start from the very beginning of that development up until the current Arcan Quest, then fill in the blanks as we go and find any lingering questions or potential inconsistencies. So anyway, Let's begin. As a refresher to the concept of Descenders, this was a title given by the Fatui to creatures and individuals from beyond the firmament and beyond Tivat. Essentially, these creatures are not native to Tivat, thus considered exceptions to the fundamental rules that govern the realm. There are currently four known Descenders according to Nahida, as found by the Fatui. The first Descender is the primordial usurper known as Phanis. It was a creature who waged war against the old rule of Tivat and established the New World Order by fighting the Seven Sovereigns and sealing their power. The second Descender was a throne only known as the Second One Who Came, and you can read the book before Sun and Moon to understand the war that happened when they arrived here and fought the first Descender. The fourth Descender is the Traveler, but surprisingly, not their sibling. Nahida speculates that something happened to the sibling's fate that altered their status as a Descender, thus making them a resident of Devot with or without their consent. What that alteration is specifically is currently unknown, but that's a story for another time. So we move on to who is the third. The concept of the third descender was heavily debated about in the lore community due to having no concrete information about what they are. A lot of people actually speculated that Alice was the third descender, but now with the new lore, the plot thickens. According to the Flowers of Paradise Lost, invaders descended from beyond the firmament, bringing with them destruction, overturning rivers, spreading plagues, and though the invaders brought war to the Sealy, they also brought about illusions that could break through shackles to the land. But the master of the heavens, consumed by fear of the rising tide of delusion and breakthroughs, sent down the divine nails to mend the land, laying waste to the mortal realm. The Staff of Scarlet Sands mentions that, in the original world, the barriers were torn down and the dark poison had penetrated the earth. To heal that fragile, sad, and imperfect world, the spikes descended and pierced through the earth's crust. The Descender gave humanity the mind to question the gods, thus challenging the order of the heavenly principles. However, what is more interesting is that the Third Descender's remains were used by the First and Second to create the Gnosis together, as a means to subdue and control the resentments and loathing of the world stemmed from the disaster that previously struck. Furthermore, that means whatever prerogative was sent by Celestia to initiate the Archon War must also have a secondary purpose, considering the rewards from them are stolen and sealed powers of a mysterious deity. So to answer the question on who or what the Third Descender is, I have four prepositions. Number one, the goal of the Third Descender when they came here was to aid humanity and give them the wisdom that would otherwise be considered blasphemy. As I was reading the lore of the invaders, I realized that most of them had the idea of conquest in mind, with the first and second fighting for dominion over the land. But one thing that struck me differently was also the concept of educating the mortals and bestowing wisdom. According to the Staff of Scarlet Sands, the beastly trail from the poison should be cut off, for taking poison is a sin running deeper than the sky. But how sweet the whispers can be, and how clear the wisdom of which they speak. Knowledge in Genshin can be seen as both a curse and a blessing, with it pertaining to how innovation and creation has birthed mortal arrogation. This is most evident with Conria's destruction, but also with other ancient civilizations like Remoria and King Deshretz. So I like the idea that the Third Descender was a fallen angel of some sort, giving wisdom to humanity. There's a lot of mythologies and other biblical references that would also be able to support this. Such wisdom could include the empowerment of the elements, or even how to use it naturally without the need of intervention from the heavenly principles. This goes well in line with the fact that the Gnosis are powerful artifacts, harvested from their body capable of doing feats beyond simple elements control. It would also make sense why the first and second descenders were particular in not only stopping them but harnessing their power as well. Because if the remains of this deity were to fall into the wrong hands, humanity would have the means to question the gods. I also like the idea that the third descender wasn't necessarily malevolent but the destruction that they caused by teaching humanity was so massive that they needed to be stopped. Number 2. 
The third descender has angel allegories similar to the other descenders. This one is minor, but all the other descenders have angel motifs, with Phanus and the second one being referred to as thrones, and the traveler resembling a seraph. I just think it'll be neat to continue that design philosophy. Number 3. The third descender was so powerful that they had the ability to bypass the Vat's natural laws established by the heavenly principles. I want to focus on the Gnosis and what it actually does for the wielder. Currently, we know that a Gnosis is element compatible and can even enhance elemental abilities. But we also know that Gnosis can be batteries for powering other artificially created creatures as we've seen with Scaramouche. Combining two Gnosis can have permanent repercussions to other aspects of Tevat's foundational principles, such as the rewriting of the Erminsel or the removal of an entity entirely. So the damage that more than three could do is beyond unthinkable. The Gnosis are also capable of enhancing the concepts attached to the respective element, with the Akasha system being developed by Rukadevta using her Gnosis, or Morax being unable to produce Mora without the Geonosis. It was also unclear though if the Orchis was powered specifically by the Hydronosis or it was a joint effort by also combining Fossilar's base divinity, but that's also another possible use. So when you consider what the Gnosis can do, is it possible that the Third Descender, considering that they are their remains, can also do what these things can? And if that was the case, I can definitely see why the First and the Second Descender considered them as a threat to the order and balance of Tevat. Honestly, that'd be pretty horrifying. Number 4. The third descender is based off the Gnostic concept of the Sophia. Gnosticism plays a massive role in the symbolism of the Archons and the worlds of Devot, with most formations of the gods' hierarchies being attributed to religious texts as inspiration. I believe that the third descender, though, is no different, and they're meant to reflect the concept of Sophia. According to Wikipedia, Sophia, Greek for wisdom, and who in turn brings about the creation of materiality. Sophia is described as unruly and disobedient, which is due to her bringing a creation of chaos into the world. The reason that I say they're based off of the Sophia is because technically, the creation of the Gnosis, which in turn created the Archons by assignment, birthed the Archon War. Furthermore though, while the Demiurge, who would be the primordial usurper in this case, isn't birthed from Sophia, I think it's less of a direct allegory but instead just a reference to how the New World Order became the way that it is with the creation of the Seven Archons. However, I also like the idea that Sophia, or Wisdom, is bestowed upon humanity and considered as chaotic and unruly. But this theory is not complete and there are three important questions that I want to reconsider. Number one, why were the Gnosis created in the first place? We know vaguely that their purpose was to re-establish order, but what's the purpose of actually cutting up the Third Descender's body and storing them into small artifacts instead of leaving it to die? One of my guesses is that it has something to do with resurrecting the Third Descender, like an Exodia where if you collect all of the Gnosis and still enough magical power, they'll come back, but that's also a stretch. Number two is, what is even the purpose of giving the Gnosis to the Seven Archons? We know that there used to be a lot of demon gods that ruled Tevat peacefully, or at least had their own territories where they kind of vaguely respected each other's boundaries. Depends on the gods. But the Gnosis are the remains of something as strong as a descender, and not only that, they're able to fundamentally be used to empower elemental existences and almost rewrite a lot of aspects of Tevat. So why give it to the demon gods? And most importantly, why give it as a prize? The Archon War's true purpose was to find seven demon gods who were not only powerful enough to take on their opponents, but also create plans for the prosperity of humanity. But I'm still curious, why insist on giving them the remains of a dead god and why that remains are considered as the authorities of the gods when these artifacts are very, very dangerous? The only reason I can think of is purposefully isolating each piece so that they can't be formed together for unknown reasons. Or just genuine protection of the seven Gnosis because a demon god has given them. But we know that this logic is flawed because we currently have the timeline where the Gnosis is basically a handout. So I'm just curious what the rationale was for not only starting the Archon War, but also giving the Gnosis to the Seven Archons. Number 3. Are they the outlander in the story of the Seelie? When I was reading the lore and trying to piece together my thoughts, the problem was evident that anyone after the first ascender was immediately referred to as invaders or outlanders. In the subsequent lores after Before Sun and Moon, for example, the Flowers of Paradise Lost and the Scarlet Sands, this would be okay, but unfortunately, there is little distinction between the third and the second currently in the lore. So I have to entertain the idea that the third descender could be the outlander that the ancestor of the Seelie married, only to be stopped by the disaster brought by the war between the second 
second one who came, and Fanis. But this is still massive guesswork, and I have no real confirmation that this is the case. So I'll need to check up on this. And then number 4 is what came first, the Gnosis' shape or the human game of chess. I find it kind of funny that Genshin would choose to create the Gnosis based on the chess pieces, but not address the fact that the game chess is actually real in-universe. So did the first and second descenders see the game chess and decide, I bet, or did they make the Gnosis first and then humanity decided to make a game out of them? I don't know, it's just a funny question. But I also have another theory. What if they're not dead and this is a red herring? We need to entertain the possibility that they're still alive somewhere, considering that their current status is up in the air. My take on this possibility though is that Genshin's lore isn't really a big fan of red herrings in its own internal consistency. Most of the time, the information at the end of the Archon Quest is basically set in stone. But I like the possibility that the Third Descender isn't completely dead, but instead depowered. I also want to address to Sarita's plan that if she wants to get all the Gnosis, what would the purpose be? Does she want to use the power of the Third Descender? Does she want to revive them? Who knows, honestly. Or maybe she just wants the elemental enhancement. That's also a very strong possibility. But anyways, that's it for me. The third Descender lore drop was absolutely massive, and I'm so excited to see what it has in store for us. Anyway, my name is Aster, and thank you for chilling with me. Next video, let's talk about visions. According to the Flowers of Paradise Lost, Invader- God damn it. For taking poison- <clears throat> My throat is killing me. <laughs>